This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the super easy all-in-one platform that will help you build your own website. Stand out and succeed online with Squarespace. It's a movie about a magic sorcerer that grants wishes but turns evil so a girl, the seven dwarves, and a goat save the day by singing and chasing a star. What else do you want? It's a musical. It has talking animals. How are you not on board? Thank you, Mr. Disney, for your opening argument. Mr. DreamWorks, your response. <clears throat> Trolls. Oh. oh, you've got to be kidding me. Color. Oh, good point. Oh, yeah. oh, come on. That's interesting. Fun. Brilliant. Yes. Oh he can't just say fun and not elaborate. That's not allowed. Anna Kendrick. Oh my god. Oh. I love Anna Kendrick. In sync. <laughs> How the hell is that a selling point? Half of you don't even know what that is. Just let me take you to a better place. So this movie exists. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I didn't know this was just the third Trolls movie. Like, no bullshit. I honestly thought this was like the fifth one. I have no idea where I got movies 3 to 4, but I truly believed it all right. But yeah, apparently I was wrong. This was just the third movie. So with that, we officially have yet again another Dreamers trilogy. And you know what that means. Have a completely unnecessary fourth movie that deviates from the original story, theme, and characters and replace them with a low quality and lazily written story. Oh, apologies. That was actually the new DreamWorks. But count your lucky stars, trolls. You're about to hit that wall very soon. Now, I know it's not a good time to talk about DreamWorks right now. After pretty much glazing the hell out of them in the Puss in Boots sequel, dropping three eggs in a row does not bode well for me. Wake up, DreamWorks. You're embarrassing me. Well, anyways, as per popular demand, for some reason, a lot of you guys really wanted me to talk about this movie. And I guess I can see the good reason behind it so since you asked for it i went ahead and watched it myself but before that i thought to myself hey you know i vaguely remember enjoying the first trolls movie so it wouldn't really hurt anyone if i went ahead and rewatched it right and while i'm at it it wouldn't really make sense if i jumped from the first movie to the third so i went ahead and watched the second one as well the second movie didn't matter at all by the way so that was a waste of time but with all that out of the way what can I say about Trolls Band Together? Well, I kinda liked it, in a way. Okay, to be fair, it's probably because I binge watched the entire trilogy in one sitting, but honestly, this movie's not that bad. It's not as good as the first one, but it's still good. But overall, it's a fun movie. It's colorful, the animation is such a joy to watch, the singing and the performances are always the main draw and never does disappoint. And the one thing DreamWorks has done seemingly well with its franchise is their world building. Each movie expands upon this troll world and they do it in the most creative and batshit crazy way. Speaking of batshit crazy, this whole thing feels like a fever dream, but in a good way. Like, a lot happens in this movie and I don't know what to feel. The first movie was still kinda grounded in terms of its universe, but as each movie progresses, the more you feel that the franchise starts fighting its rooting and identity. Nothing speaks of that louder than trolls band together. Set not so far from the events of the second movie, our heroes embark on a journey to rescue Branch's kidnapped brother. But in order to do that, they would have to do the impossible. Reunite a boy band. Pitted against Disney's 100th anniversary celebration wish, Trolls Band Together would put up quite of a fight reeling in $210 million globally. Now, that's less of an earnings compared to Wish's $250 million, but it gets impressive when you find out that Wish had a budget that was in the range of $200 million as well, with Trolls 3 only needing $95 million. What the fuck, Disney? What type of software are you paying for? Jesus Christ. And that's a pretty good net positive. That's like 
like illumination territory with that type of ratio. But hey, with movies, it's not about the money, it's about the experience, said no company ever. So let's go ahead and see it for ourselves. Is this Trolls movie hiding an underrated classic or is it simply just a colorful distraction for kids? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at Trolls Band Together. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build your own ideal website. Either it's for your business, your brand, or for your own personal use, Squarespace has got you covered. Squarespace has all the tools you need to build your very own professional-looking website. Kickstart your project with Squarespace's top-of-the-line features. Squarespace offers a variety of flexible, easy-to-use website templates so that you don't even have to worry about starting from scratch. Squarespace even gives gives you the ability to customize your own site and make it look and share content such as stories, photos, videos in any way you want. And that's all thanks to their powerful blogging tools. And with their built-in drag and drop editor, Squarespace's fluid engine easily changes the game and can get you to finish building your website in no time. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash beaniebryan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Or just simply click the link in the description down below. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Alright, so the movie begins with the baby branch in a flash Flashback. And we're shown that he actually used to be part of a mega successful boy band comprised of his brothers. We have Clay, the fun one, Spruce, the heartthrob, Floyd, the sensitive one, and John Dory, the leader. And together with Baby Branch, they form Brozone. So they kinda introduce this thing called the perfect family harmony, where each member of the band hits a specific note and... Yeah, they don't really explain what it does, technically. But no one's ever hit the perfect family of harmony before. Is it true it can shatter diamonds? Yeah, it's that powerful. Foreshadowing. You got the pre-show jitters. Everyone gets them. You want to know what I do when I get them? Barf, pass out, and pee pan. No, that's what you do when you watch the Megamind sequel. Well, anyways, though it was never successfully rehearsed, John Dory forces the group to still attempt to do the perfect family harmony, which ultimately led to things going haywire and ruining the concert, resulting to the group to finally disband. Branch, you are gonna do the most important thing of all. Take care of grandma. Oy, well that didn't work out well, did it? Fast forward to present day, and we're reintroduced to our main characters, Branch and Poppy, attending their good old friends King Grizzle and Bridget's wedding. Hey, would you look at that? These characters still exist. The last movie completely forgot about you two and your species, but hey, welcome back, I guess. So, they kinda set up the story in a weird way. During the wedding, just when Grizzle and Bridget were about to finish their vows, John Dory, the leader, out of nowhere just comes barreling into the ceremony. He even audibly says to stop the wedding. Stop the wedding! The stupidest part about all this is that the reason why he showed up and pretty much disrupted the whole wedding doesn't have to do with anything related to the bride and groom. He's literally just there to talk to Branch. Sorry. Is this bad timing? Motherfucker, it's a wedding. Yes, it's bad timing. And this is where John Dory starts to give a breakdown about why he's looking for his brother. Doesn't really explain why he had to interrupt the entire wedding, but hey, you do you, buddy. Oh, by the way, John Dory spills all of this during the wedding, which I found infuriating. Like, it was funny at first, but the scene just kept going. And Grizzle and Bridget are just there in the background waiting for these fucking trolls to finish their conversation. I was kind of waiting for Poppy to try and acknowledge that it's a bad time to interrupt, but no! She's the main culprit on why Bridget's big day is getting hijacked. Side note, I actually found this line from Grizzle really funny. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we lose the venue at 11's. <laughs> it's such a simple joke, but you gotta chuck it out of me, I don't know why. You could have started by telling me you had a secret brother! Dad, did you know about this? Huh. What would I know about secret family members? <laughs> Foreshadowing. We didn't even try on this one. So John Dory comes in and immediately tells Branch about their brother, Floyd, being in trouble. Turns out he got kidnapped by Velvet and Veneer, a pop star twin duo of Mount Rages. And yes, you are right, they are indeed not trolls nor are they Bergens. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is where the movie introduces us to other species other than trolls and Bergens. But I think I'm wrong so you should fact check me on that one. And they'd show that the twins are actually draining Floyd's talents to use as their own. And the more they use him, the faster he goes night night. Now remember the part earlier when Baby Branch mentioned that 
that the perfect family harmony can shatter diamonds? Well, give a round of applause to our fantastic writers as would you look at that, looks like Floyd is trapped in a box made of, drum roll please, diamonds. You didn't see that one coming, did ya? Wow, oh, award amazing. Screen Good play. job. Congratulations. Now about Velvet and Veneer, don't worry, we'll talk about these two later in the video. But for now, with no other way to save their brother, it's up to our heroes to find and gather the other members of Brozone and have them perform the perfect family harmony. And that's pretty much the entirety of the movie. There's really nothing more to say. Like the previous two films, it's low-key a road trip movie. I mean, I get it. If it worked on the first and second films, it'll be stupid if you just stop using what obviously works, right? Right, guys? Right? DreamWorks? Right? But, I mean, the search isn't really saying much. Like, we already know where Floyd is, John Dory's already here, and so is Branch. So all that's left missing are two people. Not much of a giant search if you ask me. But that's not really the strong point of the movie. Similar to the previous installments, the real stars of the movie are the performances. And I gotta admit, they're way better than the last movie, that's for sure. Probably because I'm a sucker for a retro song, so their performances here got me to enjoy this movie a tad bit more than I should have. But anyways, we get the gist that this is the entire premise, right? It's our heroes jumping from place to place and reuniting a boy band. Eerily similar to that one episode in Phineas and Ferb. And yes, we do get a song every time we meet a member of the band. Oh, yeah, you thought I forgot? This movie's a musical, like every other Trolls movie. But not just a musical, a jukebox musical. The worst type of musicals. Though I am not much of a big fan of jukebox musicals, cover songs can't really express as much as emotion as original songs, Trolls actually does a good job blending in multiple tracks and releasing them as medleys and honestly they sound pretty good really good even however this movie is egregiously predictable by the way they play it really safe and really by the numbers that the story is just super surface level no twists no turns just a straight beeline to the finish line what you think is gonna happen is about to happen so I guess it makes sense that they have to throw in unnecessary fillers to pad the runtime as well. Because at the same time, Poppy gets her own subplot about finding out that she has a long lost sister that her father kept a secret all these years. Which she completely glosses over and downplay by the way. Girl, your own father just kept your own sister's existence a secret from you and you just chalk it up as if he does this shit every Tuesday? What do you mean we're sisters? I can't believe dad didn't tell me I have a sister. That is so, so dad. Fucking what the fuck does that mean? But anyways, before we get into all that, we go back to the movie where our heroes are on their way to find the next member of the group, Spruce. And they wind up in Vacay Island, where the locals are kind of like Muppets instead of trolls. And okay, now this probably needs to be addressed. These puppets are essentially the second different type of species we've seen by now. First, it was whatever Velvet and Veneer are supposed to be, and now, these Muppets. So yeah, clearly the movie is doing some world building here. And I gotta hand it to them. They're doing it really well. I love how the first movie focused on the trolls and Bergens coexisting. Then the second movie introduced us to different types of trolls. And this third one just decided to expand the trolls universe altogether. Introducing us to different kinds of species that exist. Outside from trolls and Bergens. I especially love how chaotic and more playful the environment looks for VK Island. They're making it look like the world is created by a kid's imagination during playtime and that's exactly what you see. Anyways, they managed to bring Spruce on board which means they're only missing one more member, Clay, with some help from used equipment. Seriously man, did you really keep your brother's used underwear up on a frame, let alone not even wash it? Well, that unwashed piece of clothing turned out to be major help since it would lead to our heroes finding not only Clay but also Viva, Poppy's long lost sister. Yeah, so it turns out in the first movie, while escaping from the Bergens, Viva and some other trolls were separated from the rest. With nowhere left to go, they decided to hide in an old abandoned mini golf course. And they've been there ever since. So does that mean we get to see an ever so cheerful Poppy be placed in a difficult situation where she would try to handle and maneuver around someone who has undergone significant trauma from the outside world, resulting into a deeper understanding of a person's psyche? Nope, she just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish I was kidding, but that's literally what happened. Okay, to be fair, she does feel bad about leaving her. But she still leaves her either way. But don't worry about it though. Viva would meet Grizzle and Bridget 5 minutes later anyways, which causes her to change her mind and help Poppy. So that's a plot just came and went. With all the members reunited, off they go to Mount Regis to save their brother. But before they could even get to Mount Regis, the brothers would start to fight again, resulting to Branch walking out on them instead. This time... 
I'm walking out on you. And can we talk about Branch in this movie for a second? You know what? In fact, let's talk about these two. Both Branch and Poppy were pretty disappointing for me. The movie points out that they're dating, but I hardly feel anything between them. Hell, I'd argue that they were much more compatible back in the first movie where they just fought all the time. Because here, they kind of feel like they're on autopilot. Branch isn't really as funny as he was in the previous movies. Poppy isn't much of a standout either. She didn't really do much. She practically spends the majority of the movie fangirling over Brozone. And though it wasn't really overwhelming enough to distract me from the movie, she just felt more of a side character than a main character. Kinda wish they did more for her besides being a stan and longing for a sister. Well, anyways, back to the movie. After walking out on the band, Branch is joined by Poppy and Tiny, and together they head on over to Mount Regis and hatch up a plan to save Floyd alone. And with that, let's talk about the main villains, Velvet and Veneer. Besides the performances and songs, these two are pretty much the second best thing about this movie. Their character designs are weird but in a good way. Their singing and rifting the entire movie was super fun. They're genuinely funny. They share a really good dynamic together. And most important of all, they're good villains. And sure, you can factor in that their names are very catchy. They're not as iconic as other DreamWorks villains, but they're still very fun. I like the idea of Veneer not being as evil as his sister Velvet, but he's still on her side for most of the time. The movie does clearly set him up to switch over as a good guy in the end, but what I like about his character is the fact that Veneer never does turn a complete 180 against his sister. He never technically betrays her. He had multiple scenes where he has thoughts about what they're doing was wrong and that they were going too far, yada yada, but he still can't kept going and stayed with Velvet's side because he really does love his sister and he really does love being famous. And I like that. I was fully expecting him to outright betray Velvet at some point in the climax to help the trolls, but he never did. It was only when they got arrested where he technically betrays her. But even then, it was pretty harmless. It's just him admitting to the fact that they were both frauds and talentless and I like that. Well anyways, back to the movie. To our hero's surprise, the rest of the bro zone would get captured and their talent would also be siphoned out by the twins. With no other way to save them, Poppy and Branch would go on a car chase against the twins to get the kidnapped trolls back. And I am dead ass when I say that this movie's whole climax is straight up fire. For an entire chase sequence, Velvet and Veneer will be performing all while trying to get rid of Poppy and Branch. And it is fun as hell. The visuals look amazing, the performances are great, the camera work is very impressive, and overall it's a very, very good time. Well anyways, Grizzle and Bridget together with Viva would drop by and help out the gang. They managed to take the brothers off the twins all except Floyd. With time running out, the brothers finally band together. <laughs> See what I did there. And successfully achieved the perfect family harmony, shattering the diamond and saving Floyd. Oh yeah, and this shit? I'm already up, but you lift me higher. Immaculate. And I don't mind if the world spins faster. With Floyd all safe and sound and the brothers reunited, Velvet and Veneer are arrested and all seems well. Time jump days later and our heroes are back on Vacay Island where Branch introduces us to another boy band here reunited. What? You didn't think Brozone was the only band I've ever been in, did you? Please. Branch, it's almost showtime, and I was just thinking that maybe we could. What? To snap it, take it to her bed. They got in sync back together. DreamWorks actually took the time to find a way to reunite and fucking sync for a Trolls movie. Fucking forget about Megamind 2 for a second and bask in the fucking miracle. You know what you should fucking do, Disney? Make a movie about friendship and reunite One Direction. That'll give you a box office hit in no time. Is it as good as the first Trolls movie? No. And trust me, that movie set the bar pretty low, I'm not gonna lie. So do with that information as you will. Is it worth the watch? Well, it depends. If you enjoy jukebox musicals or just enjoy the Trolls franchise in general, then I'd assume you'd like this movie just fine. One of the positive notes I do have is that this does feel like the Trolls franchise finally knows its identity. It's much more comfortable now, and I can totally appreciate that they're trying a lot of new things and they're actually really good attempts. I'm looking at you, Disney. But this doesn't really say much because the movie does feel like it's been dumbed down a bit. Compared to the first movie, this one does feel like it's out of sorts and all over the place. The jokes aren't as funny and they are way more 
kid friendly if you get what I'm saying but overall this movie's fine if you want to kill some time and watch something fun and colorful this might be worth checking out but hey though not as interesting as the first movie with a star-studded cast fun animation dazzling visuals and great performances Trolls Band Together is an okay movie elevated by it simply having a fun time so I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 that's for today's video I hope you enjoyed your stay have a great day and a great life and I'll see you all next time bye Oh,